Praise God. Welcome today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. So glad to be with you today. And why don't we get into the Word of God. So happy to be uh, just able to study the Word of God. I have my wife together with me. And uh, I pray that uh, the Spirit of God is just going to speak to you powerfully today. And why don't we just take a moment here before we get started and pray together. And I'm going to ask my wife, Christy, will you, will you pray? Father, we just thank you for this time that we come together to open up your word and to be able to communicate the word one with another, Father God. We thank you for revelation. We thank you, Father, for direction. And we thank you, Father, that today we have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord God is revealing to us and eyes to see in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to be talking about the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's Romans chapter 8. If you want to look there with us today, get into this Bible study. So important that you study the Word of God. And I'm glad you're with us today as we study the Word of God together. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, uh, beginning with verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You know, one of the things I like to do is read the, the scripture when I study slowly and I reread that same scripture over and over so I hear it right. Mm. I think that's important because the Bible says in that verse, there's a couple of key words there where it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them, mm. which, so the now to me sticks out, the which are in, so the which, so those who, are in Christ Jesus. But here's the key word. You can be in Christ or not in Christ. Either way, you can walk in condemnation. If this next part of this verse, right after that comma after Jesus, it says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's a very important part of that scripture, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Verse 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So the Bible tells us why or how that we're able to first be in the Spirit. Because the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free. So that gives us the ability to be in the Spirit, to be in Christ. So a person that is in the Spirit is in Christ. Mm -hmm. A person that's not in Christ is not in the Spirit. That's right. But if you're in the Spirit, you have to be in Christ. But if you're not in Christ, you're not in the Spirit, at least not in the Spirit or the law of the Spirit of life. Mm. You might be in the law of sin and death, yeah. but you're not in the law of the of Spirit of life in Christ. The Bible says that that law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, has made us free from the law of sin and death. So that's so important to our Christian walk. And I want us to look at this as, you know, just a little bit deeper. Uh, what and how this has taken place. How, you know, how, when we talk about laws, how do we enact this? Of course, it says who walk after the spirit. So when you walk after the spirit, you're enacting this law or you're putting the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus into action. You're activating it, so to speak. Yeah, that's a good way of saying it. Yeah, when you walk in uh, the spirit. So when you walk in the spirit, you're beginning to activate the law of the spirit of life in Christ. And I think this is very, very important. How do we do that? Well, um, you know, there's a... a a way that a lot of people talk today and has been for a long time. I've heard it. I've said it. But I think we need to have a better understanding or description of what it means to have a personal relationship with God. Like mm -hmm. oftentimes people will say that Christianity is not a religion but a relationship. You know, uh, it's about having a relationship or a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. There, that is true. Mm. There's a truth in that, yeah. but it's not complete. Because if our understanding of what that means is not complete, mm. then what we're saying might lead to not a good understanding overall. 
and not really walking according to how God wants us to walk because we don't understand it exactly. Yeah, that's right. That's that's <laughs> that's powerful, and that's true. That's that's what I mean, and, and that, that's that is so important because. Yes, it's about having a personal relationship with Jesus. That personal relationship with Jesus is that area. And when we talk about that, we're talking about with the Holy Spirit of God who Jesus has given to us uh, as the paraclete, one called alongside to help. Mm. And understanding this law of the Spirit of life, again, if you're in Christ Jesus, Mm. you're able to walk in the Spirit. Okay. Now, that is an important understanding because... When we talk about that, we're talking about being born again. Mm. Now, a person who's born again was born again not of corruptible seed, as Peter tells us, but incorruptible, which is the Word of God. Mm. And that seed, when you think about seed, he's talking about, you know, how babies are born. Mm. That's the kind of seed he's talking about. Okay, so we're finding out that the Word of God is that we read, that we hear, that we receive has the ability to create life, that life in us that we hear. Well, when we heard the message of salvation, we heard of Jesus for salvation, the Holy Spirit, when we believed upon that word of God, every word of God has the power to create. We know that God, through his word, created all things. We see the result, we can measure the result of the power of his word. And a lot of times science is trying to measure the results that they find. They're way off in many areas just because it's human, you know, abilities and and science, you know, which is only by human ability, not by God's ability. But my point being is, is that we can see the effects of what God's word does in a person's life. And we call that fruit of the spirit. Yes. And when a person has received the word, so, but it carries the very nature of God in it. Yes. It carries the very person of God in it. That's why we are called children of God because we were born mm-hmm. again, not of corruptible seed. Corruptible seed is from your first birth. Yes. That is your natural birth. Mm-hmm. And, and when you were born, you were born in a fallen, with a fallen nature. Uh, and you know, as, as, as you're saying that, as a child learns to live in a new way, as we as parents, we instruct them and we help them to mature and grow. Yeah. It's easy for them to revert back to what they used to be. Mm. And as children of God, it's easy for us to revert back to that old sin nature because it was more, it was, it's something that we were doing. And so it's important that we, you know, we talked about this last time, the renewing of our mind and keeping our mind in line with what God says about us. Yeah. And that's what helps us to actually stay into this, in the spirit along with our, our personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, the paraclete that it walks along beside us. He's supposed to be our standby, our advocate. Mm. He's the one who leads us and guides us. So really walking in the Spirit is allowing yourself to humble yourself to the Word of God and to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you on a daily basis instead mm. of just reverting back to the natural thing that you would normally do or trying to use your own natural wisdom or whatever it may be and actually leaning on the arm of, of God and his spirit to lead and guide you. And that's what helps walk, helps you to walk in the spirit. You know, that's so powerful. I'm, I'm actually looking up Hebrews chapter 10, mm-hmm. uh, verse 32, because it says, but recall the former days when after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with suffering, sometimes even being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. So he's talking about there, when you were born again, he's talking about the struggle that you had coming out of the, the way that you were living with the fellowship and the companions that you had mm. in that time. Yes. Because when you are born again, your nature changes. You don't want to continually run in sin. You don't want to do those things. And you're not going to be in companions with those that do because it's no longer the way you live. It's no longer your lifestyle mm-hmm. because you've, you've turned to God. You repented. Mm-hmm. When you repented, the Holy, and you, you said, Jesus, I make you Lord. Yes. I'm, and God, you're my God. In that moment, the Holy Spirit overshadows you because you, you believed for your salvation. You believed on Jesus for your salvation. You believed in him for your salvation. And the Holy Spirit began to do a work in you. We call it a regeneration. 
of your spirit, making it new. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Now because you have an all things become new, you no longer want to run with the world, do the things the world is doing because it's they're living and doing by the law. They're enacting the law of sin and death in their life. And if you actually are allowing yourself to falter back and forth, it's yeah. because you're not allowing the Lord to actually be Lord over your life. Mm. You're trying to Lord over your own life. And yep. that's when you walk in the flesh and you continue to pull yourself back into the old nature. Yeah. But that's why he says, don't do that. Walk after the Spirit. And that comes through that, that time that you spend in the Word and that time that you spend with the Lord and, and being filled with the Spirit in your time of prayer and, and keeping yourself built up mm. and praying with all manner of prayer, whether you're praying in the natural or in the Spirit or in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You're keeping yourself built up so that you can hear God's voice more clearly yeah. and allow Him to lead you because if mm. not, you're going to get pulled back in because the enemy is roaming around seeking whom he may devour and a lot of times I hear Christians say oh but it's just that's just my personality the beautiful thing about being filled with the with the spirit of God and walking in the spirit is your personality can change yeah and that's that's glorious that's right all things all things all things become new what you you have now the ability to be everything that God wants you to be that he created you for yes. that doesn't happen until you are born again mm, true because again there are two kingdoms. There's the God of this world, which is Lord over the law of the spirit of sin and death. Mm -hmm. And then you have the law of the spirit of life in Christ, where God is your God, which is the kingdom of God. There's the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. There's the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And there is this war for the souls and the battle for souls of men. Mm -hmm. And the thing with what you're saying, I like that because that's what we're talking about. Have, what is this understanding about the law of the spirit of life and how to enact that in a daily basis is that personal relationship with Jesus. That's what we're talking about. And what I was reading there out of Hebrews 10, 32, uh, this is so important because, yes, that is part of Christianity mm -hmm. is that you have a personal relationship with Jesus. Without that, there's no new birth. There's no, but at the same time, you are enacting a law. Mm -hmm. A law is not legalism, we're talking about the law of the spirit of life, it is religion. So we have a relationship and religion yes. together. They work together as one. So you're saying that the, the, the religion is basically the, the things that we do. Yeah, that's right. It's the, because That's what the, by definition, religion is the practice of what you believe. That's good. If you say, I just have a relationship but no religion, then you're not practicing it. You're just going by how you feel how I feel today, how I feel then. You're not growing in knowledge to learn the ways, the understanding of this relationship with God. Mm. Okay, because Jesus said, if you love me, you will do what I say. So true. Not just, you love me for what I've done for you. Yes. See, this goes back into an immaturity, mm -hmm. even based upon personal relationship, marriage relationship, and everything else where, well, love is what you do for me. That's not real love. No. And, and that's not real relationship. No, it's not. Relationship is, is there as we understand. See, uh, here's the thing. The difference between what I think in the initial setting of when that revelation really began to come out about a personal relationship and not religion is really based upon this, mm -hmm. this truth. That is... Religion for redemption is wrong because you cannot do or practice your That's belief right. system to redeem yourself. To redeem yourself. That's true. Okay, and redemption is important because redemption gives us the ability for salvation. That's right. And that's where a lot of people, I think, they understand, but it needs to have a... Uh, a purity of understanding, maybe a better way of communicating, a more of a clearer understanding uh, when we talk about it like that and even think about it. Because if we don't think about it right, then it's always about, okay, you know, Jesus, I love you, 
I've got these problems, meet my needs. Yes. But that's not even a good relationship no. anywhere. I mean, if it's always about you, uh, then, you know. It's kind of like when a, a, a couple first gets married. Yeah. You know, they think that they're getting into it, and it's all what the, the other person's going to do for them. Yeah. But, you know, and I was like that. Um, cause I didn't understand, I didn't have an understanding of what real love was, but as God began to show me, it really is about what I can do for you. And as I do for you, then I also reap for myself. Yeah. And it's the same way with our relationship with God. If we will do the things that God's desiring for us to do, there's a natural way that he, he begins to bless us with the things that we desire anyway. He, he yeah. does that. Well, that's relationship, and, that's and, relationship and you begin you begin to know his heart yes. because you really love him. You want you want to please him, not just get what you want. That's right, and that's manipulation and control. We are, yeah, it can be, you know. And, and but a lot of times people do not, you know, when we when we talk about a personal relationship, we're talking about the ability to daily walk in the spirit with a relationship of the. Now, when we talk about walking in the spirit, oftentimes people think. We're talking about walking in the Holy Spirit. Mm. He's talking about your spirit or your flesh because there's a war. Romans 7 says there's a war going on within your members. Mm. Okay, Romans 6, 7. Yeah, Romans 7 says, Paul says, look. I, and a lot of people use this scripture. He was only using it as an analogy to make a personal connection to the hearer. Yeah. Okay, he wasn't saying, you know, it's incapable, incapable of me walking in the spirit. Yeah, that's you right. know, that's not what he's saying. You know, and God understands me, you know, he loves me, so, and I have a personal relationship, not a religion. That's not what he was saying. He was saying that, yeah, you got a war, I got a war. We all have this war working in our members. But he also says that through Christ, we've overcome the flesh. That's right. We have that ability if we're willing to actually walk and serve and follow God wholeheartedly. And that's now, where victory comes from. Yeah, because and, we're always talking about being victorious in Christ, but yet we're not willing to have the victory over our own flesh so that we can walk in Christ. Yeah, and, and that again goes back to a personal relationship, and that's why it's so important as a believer, a Christian. We also need to be filled and baptized. That word "baptized" means meaning to be totally immersed in mm. the Holy Spirit, yeah. and that is another yielding up of our life yes, to a control of. Allowing God, well, when I say a control, it's probably not the right word. It's yielding up our life to the ability to yield to the Holy Spirit and let Him work through us instead of us control what the Holy Spirit can and cannot do through us based upon our own way of thinking, based upon our own words, what we say, I won't ever, I can't, I'm not going to, you know. No, that's not what, that's not, that again. We're continually learning to humble ourselves and yield ourselves to God and let Him use us in any manner that He pleases on a daily basis. But oftentimes, this area of personal relationship, really for most people, and I know and as you develop and grow in the Word and in the, in the Spirit and the knowledge of God, you find that you grow through stages, you're going through these stages, and you have a, you know, and it's so important because this personal relationship with the Lord, He will quicken your heart with the Holy Spirit, the helper there, the paraclete. He'll quicken your heart when it comes to your actions, your sin, whether you're walking in the Spirit or not. Mm -hmm. And if you'll listen, he, and he's subtle. He's not going to override you because God, from the very beginning, has always gave man a free will choice. We've always had the ability to choose yeah. whom we'll serve. Ability to choose. And that free will choice is for every individual and we are called to be able to make a decision and a choice to walk either in the Spirit or after the flesh. Listen to the Holy Spirit and His promptings daily. This is that personal relationship we're talking about. Yeah. Daily and allowing Him to transform and, and, and convict us and, and use us in ways that we should be in our personal life all the time. And by doing so, we're maturing and growing every time that we Yield to the Spirit and the prompting of the Holy Spirit is subtle prompting, that still small voice. And, and we need to learn the difference between the prompting of the Spirit and our own mind, mm -hmm. our own thinking, our own ways. Because yes. oftentimes we confuse that with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Oftentimes we, you know, we confuse certain things 
because we've already made a decision and a choice of how we see things instead of letting the Holy Spirit to be that guide and that lead in that area on our daily basis. And that's that personal relationship. And that is a must. And that is a truth. But again, we need to talk about religion. What is religion? Well, it's the, it's the enacting of the law of the Spirit. It's, it's, in, it's the enactions of the law of the Spirit of life. Now, what does that mean? Well, we, it's not just about bearing fruit, okay? It's about producing the things according to the covenant. Yes. The covenant isn't about the fruit. Mm-hmm. The covenant is about the things in which God has ordained that we should do mm-hmm. and we should walk in. Mm-hmm. And that's just, you know, there's many areas of this. We talk about water baptism. Yeah. Well, that's not a dead action. Of, no, it's an action of faith. That's right. Communion. That's an action of faith. We're enacting or we're actually doing, practicing our belief system. Okay, Christianity has a practice of belief system, but it's not for redemption. But it is in obedience to God by faith. We have to do it in faith, not in in some way of just a religious act without faith. Because what you don't do in faith is dead. And sometimes I think people fall into that. Because it becomes a routine to them, so they, they actually start implementing mm. their faith into it. Yeah. When really you need to continue to walk in that place of faith every time you take communion. That's right. Every time you tithe and offer. Yeah. Every time you pray. Yeah. Every time you come to the house of God to worship. Yeah, that's part of it too. Mm. You know, the Bible even says, do not forsake yourself the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some more. And be, why? Because that's been a part of what God instituted. And again, just like in the Old Testament, those things were there are types and shadows of what would be for us. And they were living that out so we could see it. It wasn't something that, now we don't practice a lot of the things in which they did. Now there's things that we don't do. Uh, like, you know, Hebrews 9, 12 says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Again, we're talking about the eternal redemption based upon the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Nothing could ever pay for that. So we're talking about a currency in the spirit. That Mm -hmm. currency is above all currencies that no currency in the natural Mm -hmm. or in the spirit could ever pay the price of the law of sin and death. There was a price to pay for the law of sin and death. And Jesus paid that price. By that blood. And that blood was the sinless blood. Think of it like this. 1 Timothy Mm 3.16 says, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Mm -hmm. God was manifested in the flesh. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed in the world, and received up into glory. And... That is what we're talking about right here, is an understanding what law is in place in the spirit, the law of sin and death, which no one sees it, but we see the outcomes of it, the fruit of it. The fruit of that law is in the sin nature, the sin, the uh, mammon system, all of the things that the world without God Mm. is living by. But in the kingdom of God, the law of the spirit of life we are enacting. Now, the uniqueness of this is in Romans 6 says, as a believer, you can activate either one of those laws by yielding your members to yeah, that's right. whose servant you will become. The Bible says do not yield your members to. So there is a practice of our belief in which what we do reminds us of this payment. All the time. Let's say the communion. Mm. It's a reminder of our redemption, of this eternal redemption that was paid by Jesus Christ. The currency that had to be paid for, which is above. Listen, what's beautiful about that blood is even those, the Bible says Jesus went and preached to those in prison. And because the blood was paid for their redemption, there had to be the shedding of blood. But it had to not, but again, it wasn't the blood of goats and calves that could redeem 
but it had, it had to be the blood. God was manifested in the flesh. Wow. That's awesome. When you really meditate on that, really there is nothing that. Satan can do no, when right. it comes to overriding that, that cost because there's no higher cost no. anywhere ever in any, anything. And, and I think that is so, so important. And you know what? Praise God our time is oh, really? already closing and coming to an end here and we need to close but we'll pick this thought yes, up let's do that. all right again and uh praise god so amen why don't why don't you why don't you close us today oh father we thank you for the blood of jesus mm. we thank you for every drop that was shed for us lord god that the precision of that blood is so spectacular and beyond understanding father give us a deeper understanding and revelation of the precious blood of jesus and the activation that took place for us as believers, as children of God through his blood. Father, we just thank you that it just permeates in our hearts and our minds today, that we're stirred in our spirit, and we begin to look and, and even come and question and talk to you about it today individually, Lord yes, God. Jesus, thank and you. I just thank you, Father, that this word is going to come up and spring up in our hearts, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Praise God. Well, until we see each other again, why don't you follow us on Pursuit Church Mornington. You can do that on social media, Facebook, Instagram, as well as our YouTube channel. Subscribe, watch, download our podcast. Get your faith built up daily. And uh, listen, until we see each other again, God bless you.